you think of snow, you may be thinking of a scene like this, a winter wonderland. But when you zoom into these falling snowflakes, their intricate beauty is one of the coolest things in nature. Let's learn how they form in another Weather IQ. You may have heard of the saying, no two snowflakes are alike because they have different branches and designs that make each one unique. The process is complicated, so let's start with square one, or in this case, hexagon one. A snowflake starts as a small particle, such as a speck of dust, where water vapor condenses onto it. As we know, a water molecule has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. These hydrogen atoms link together, crystallize, and then form a hexagon, or a hexagonal prism. So this is why snowflakes most commonly have six sides. From here, branches can form on the corners, bonding to the second hydrogen atom. But the process isn't done. This snowflake will continue to rise into colder air in the cloud, gaining more branches and dendrites as more tiny water particles bond to the flake. Once the plate becomes too heavy, it then falls. The two main atmospheric factors are temperature and level of humidity. However, it's the temperature that mainly shapes the snowflake. When temperatures are warmer, say 28 degrees to freezing, snowflakes tend to fall as thin hexagon plates. But a higher humidity level can create larger flakes or even create the basic classic snowflake. There are 35 different shapes of snowflakes, such as needles and columns, that fall in colder temps from 14 to 27 degrees. But colder temperatures that are 10 degrees or less produce the most common and intricate snowflakes. These are known as stellar dendrites. But in this range, another snowflake that's equally as spectacular forms called the stellar plate. I'm meteorologist Chris Mulcahy. What's up, you CNC Charlotte?